Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So before I start, I would like to thank lahat ng mga nanood ng unang video natin regarding management consultancy. And I am hoping na sana magkakasama pa rin tayo sa mga future topics na i-discuss ko. So again, feel free to comment below kung ano yung mga gusto nyong topics na i-discuss. So, huwag na natin patagalin to. Let us start with our new topic. Let us discuss management accounting. So, for this topic, ang topic outline natin would be, number one, we will discuss the basic concepts behind this topic. Basically, the definition and functions of management. Then, we will differentiate financial accounting and management accounting. Next, we will compare a line function against a staff function. We will discuss the functions of a controller as we compare it to the functions of a treasurer. And the last one is the standards for ethical conduct of management accountants. Okay, so now let us start. Sir, what is the definition of management? Actually, kung igugugil mo ang definition ng management, napakaraming definition ng management. But I specifically chose this definition because this definition is related to the functions of management. And according to the definition, management is the process of planning, organizing, and controlling tasks in order to achieve or meet the goals and objectives of an organization. So basically, based from the definition, we can say na ang functions ng management ay nahati sa apat. Sir, parang bulag ka ata. Tatlo lang ang nakikita ko. So, isa-isa natin yung apat na functions. Ha? Number one is planning. Number two, organizing. Number three, controlling. And number four is decision making. O sir, bakit wala ang decision making sa definition ng management? Always remember that decision making is inherent in all management functions. Meaning, decision making is present during planning. It is present as well during organizing, and again, it is present during controlling. Kung baga sa lahat ng functions ng management, nandun ang decision making. Okay, so sige, isa-isahin natin lahat ng functions ng management. Let us start first with planning. Planning is the process of setting short-term as well as long-term goals and objectives of the company. So, I think medyo common sense ang definition ng planning. Planning sa Tagalog, pagpaplano. Ano pinagpaplanuhan ng kumpanya? Ano pinagpaplanuhan ng management? Yung direction ng kumpanya in the future by setting goals and objective. And ang plano, mananatiling plano without execution. Okay, parang sa, pag, sa, parang sa mga magbabarkada lang yan. Eh. Sa magbabarkada, kapag magpaplano tayong magbakasyon o gumala, sabi nga natin, kapag ang plano hindi natuloy, ang tawag ay drawing. Ganon din sa kumpanya. Without execution, ang plano, mananatiling plano. And to execute it, management will do organizing or in other books, it is known as directing. Organizing or directing is known as the tapping or tackling activities of management. Sir, ano ibig sabihin ng tapping or tackling activities? Ano ang tinatap? Ano ang tinatakel? Actually, when we say tapping or tackling, it pertains to the maxim maximization of the use ng management sa entity's resources. Kumbaga, when we say organizing or directing, the ma management uses the resources of the company in order to achieve or meet the goal or objective na sinet during planning. Kaya nga siya tinawag na organizing eh. Pag sinabing organizing, ino-organize mo lahat para lahat ready in, in achieving the entity's goals and objective. Sir, bakit naman siya tinawag na directing? Directing, isipin mo na lang sa isang pelikula. Sa isang pelikula merong director. At ang director ang nagsiset ng mood, nagsasabi sa kung ano yung required acting ng pelikula para ma-achieve yung goal o objective ng pelikula. For example, Kung ang pelikula ay drama, kailangan yung mga aktor hindi nakakatawa. Kasi nakatakot yun na drama ang iyong pelikula, din ang mga audience mo tumatawa. So basically, hindi na-achieve nung pelikula yung kanyang objective. Yun ang purpose ng directing. Directing are your management activities ensuring na nasusunod yung pinagplanuhan natin during planning. 
Okay, next. After natin magplano, after natin mag-organize, ang susunod natin gagawin is to evaluate our performance. Gaano ba ka ayos ang performance natin in relation to our plan. Kaya nga pag sinabi natin controlling, controlling is all about performance evaluation. You are comparing the actual results against the planned results. That is what we call as controlling. O sir, bakit siya tinawag na controlling? Kasi during this stage, you are controlling what will happen in the future. Kasi kapag ang plano o ang actual results kapareho ng planned results, basically, wala tayong problema. Everything goes or everything went in accordance with the plan. Pero kapag ang actual results hindi bangga sa planned results, dalawa lang pwedeng mangyari. One, we will continue with the plan. Number two, we will terminate the plan and, we'll, and we will come up with a new plan. Kaya siya tinawag na controlling eh. Nakadepende yung susunod mong gagawin sa iyong performance evaluation. You are controlling what will happen next after we compare the actual results against your planned results. Okay, and then the last one is decision making. I think medyo common sense naman what is the definition of decision making. Para ma-appreciate mo ang apat na functions ng management, ilagay natin siya sa parang simpleng example or simpleng illustration. Hindi business example. Para lang maintindihan mo yung, uh, yung ibig sabihin ng apat. Okay, so let us proceed to the next slide. Okay, meron tayo itong simpleng illustration. Assuming kakagraduate mo lang mula sa BSA program. Masarap naman isipin, sir, gumraduate ako sa BSA program. And currently, you are reviewing and preparing for the board exam. At kapag ikaw ay nagre-review na for the board exam, syempre, may problema kang kaharapin. Pero ang problema mo, kakaiba. Actually, hindi mo pinoproblema ang pagpasay. Confident kang papasaw. Yabang naman, sir. Kasi syempre, sabi mo, ano, confident akong papasaw. Kum, suma cum laude and etc. etc. With, uh, with a jiwa, nung gumraduate ako na 1.0 something. Napakataas. So, almost flat 1 yung jiwa. Parang naman, papasa ka sa board exam. So, ang pinagpaplan, ang, ang problema mo, hindi yung board exam. Ang problema mo, yung oath-taking. Sir, anong problema mo sa oath-taking? Ang problema mo sa oath-taking, yung dress na susuotin mo. Kasi first year pa lang, nung, B, nung first year BSA student ka pa lang, pakiramdam mo destined kang maging CPA. Kaya as early as that, bumili ka na ng dress na susuotin mo for the oath-taking. So, ibig sabihin, ang pinoproblema mo ngayon, kasha pa ba yung dress na binili mo nung first year ka pa lang, ilang taon na ang lumipas no? And unfortunately, Nung sinukat mo during your review, one of your review days, nakita mo, hindi kasha. Kaya yun ang pinoproblema mo. Kailangan niyang magkasha kasi hindi mo pa siya nasusuot. Nire-ready mo pa lang para sa board exam yun. Kailangan niyang magkasha. So basically, your plan is to lose weight. Okay? Because currently, ang iyong timbang ay 80 kilos. And naalala mo ng mga panahon na sinukat mo yan during your first year days, ang ang iyong kilogram is 60. So, your plan is to lose weight from 80 kilograms papuntang 60 kilograms. So, that is your plan, ha? And during planning, you need to decide. Anong, anong desisyon ang gagawin ko dito, sir? You will decide kung paano ka o paano ka mababawasan ng timbang. So, may dalawa kang option. Either mag-exercise ka or mag-diet ka. Take note, hindi mo raw siya pwedeng pagsabayin. And based on your evaluation, you decided na hindi ka mag exercise You will go with the diet. Bakit hindi ako mag exercise sir? Kasi naisip mo na yung oras na ilalaan mo para sa pag exercise ni-review mo na lang sana. So, sabi mo, naku, papayat ako, magda-diet na lang ako, kukontrolin ko yung kain ko. Okay. And syempre, again, during planning, mamimili ka kung anong uri ng diet ang gagamitin mo. Kasi na may mga diet, kasi obviously, di ko naman ginagawa yun. So, ang alam ko, South Beach... Ah, di ko na alam. Okay, basta marami uri ng diet. So, basically, hindi ko alam yun. Obvious naman. So, ibig sabihin, pipili ka. So, you will decide anong diet ang gagamitin mo. And after mong mapili yung diet na gagamitin mo, you will now execute it. Siyempre, sa mga, may military diet pa ata sa mga uri, sa iba't ibang uri ng diet, nakalagay doon kung yung kakainin mo araw-araw eh. Nah, so, basically, yun yung execution that is already directing and organizing because you are now using your resources in order to achieve the plan. And what is again the plan? To lose weight from 80 papuntang 60. Okay, ito na.
the moment you are waiting for. Lumabas ang result ng board exam, hindi ka nagulat. No, okay, pumasa ka. No, sa mo, well, well, basic, no brain. No, okay, kayang-kaya ang board exam. Pero ito yung nagulat ka. No, okay, ito na, dumating na ang moment of judgment. No, okay, kailangan mo na ngayon mag Kasi you will now compare the actual results to your planned results. So, kumbaga, we are now we are now already on the controlling stage. And your actual weight, ito na, nakakatakot. From 80, ikaw ay naging 85. So, basically, hindi mo nasunod ang plano. Sobrang unfavorable po ito. Imbis na bumabad, nadagdagan pa yung timbang mo. So, ibig sabihin, pansinin mo, ha, kung nasunod mo lang sana yung plano na 60 kilograms, what will happen in the future? Hindi ka nabibili ng bagong dress. Kasi kasi na sa'yo yung dress na binili mo ng first year. Eh. Pero dahil nagkaroon ng deviation from the plan, hindi ka sumunod sa plano, anong mangyayari? Bibili ka tuloy ng bagong dress. So basically, nagbago yung mangyayari sa future because of your performance evaluation. So sir, ba't ganun? Ba't naging 85? Siguro na-realize mo later on na kaya ka pala lalong tumaba or mas lalo na dagdagan yung timbang mo kasi habang nagre-review, kumakain. Kasi nasunod mo yung diet. Yung diet nakalagay doon sa diet ko, yung kakainin mo ng breakfast, ng lunch, saka dinner. Ang problema lang, yung mga snacks, hindi mo na nasunod. Kasi gutom na gutom ka during your review, napakain ka tuloy minsan. Tapos kinakain pa, puro chocolate, sweets, no? patay tayo dyan. So from 80, hindi naging 60. From 80, naging 85. So, nung decision mo, kailangan mo nang bumili ng bagong dress. Kasi by the time na lumabas ang results ng board exam, it is just one month or less bago ang OTK. So, itong ang ilang buwan ka nag-review, hindi mo nagawang pababae ni one month pa kaya. So, na pag na mo, bibili na lang ako ng bagong dress. Sayang naman. Ngayon na po. Ganun talaga ang buwan. So, I hope na-gets nyo ha. Huwag yung joke yung, alala, yung, joke yung alalahanin nyo. I hope na-gets ninyo yung simple application natin ng apat na functions ng management. And as you can see, from planning until controlling, you are deciding. Because decision making is inherent in all management functions. Okay? So, sige. Let us proceed to the next topic. Let us differentiate management accounting as against financial accounting. Actually, kung lalabas ang management accounting na topic sa board exam, more likely, ang question na lumalabas ay umiikot dito sa comparison ng management accounting sa ka-financial accounting. Let us focus our discussion in, differenti in differentiating management accounting against financial accounting on the number 2 comparison ito. Okay, yung restrictive guidelines. Kasi yung number 1 until number 8, nakapattern lang din dyan sa restrictive guidelines na yan. Which is, always remember na ang financial accounting is governed by PFRS, PAS, or other generally accepted accounting principles. Unlike management accounting, it is not governed by any accounting standard or accounting principle. Kumbaga, in other words, Management accounting is non-regulatory. Hindi siya, wala siyang sinusunod na specific guideline or specific standard in applying its concept. And um, kung mapapansin mo, based from that comparison, yung number 2 na yan, yung number 1 until number 8, nakapattern lang sa number 2. Uh, Pula tayo sa number 1, users of information. Si financial accounting, ang users niya, internal and external. Pero primarily, external. Pero pwedeng gumamit ang internal users. Kaya siya tinawag na primarily external kasi according to the conceptual framework for financial reporting, kung naalala mo yan sa iyong financial accounting na review, according to conceptual framework, financial accounting is primarily addressed to external users. Actually, kung naalala mo sa, sa conceptual framework, may dalawang uri ng users eh. Nandyan yung primary users, saka other users. Sa primary users, nandyan ang potential and existing lenders, investors, and other creditors. And then sa other users, nandun ang employees, customers, public, government. And if we will summarize them, primarily, ang financial accounting reports are addressed to external 
users. Kaya nga ang tawag sa financial statements na ginagawa ng financial accounting ay general purpose financial statements. Pag sinabing general purpose financial statements, yung information na nasa loob ng financial statements addresses the common needs of your users. Take note na common needs, not specific needs, hindi lahat ng needs. Common lang. Kaya nga ang limitation ng financial accounting, it cannot provide all of the needed information ng kanyang users. Common lang. Pag sinabing common, ang nire-report mo sa financial accounting, yung pakiramdam mo mapapakinabangan ng lahat ng users. Hindi ng isang user lang. Unlike management accounting, ang user ng management accounting is exclusively internal. Kasi di naman niya kailangan sumunod sa PFRS eh. Ano bang sabi ng PFRS? Kailangan ang ibigay mong report nag address sa common needs ng user. Kaya ang gagawin mong FS, general purpose FS. Ang management accounting, hindi kailangan sumunod sa standard. Kaya nga ang users niya internal, tagaloob lang. Kaya nga siya tinawag na management accounting. Usually, ang nagbe-benefit ng report ay management na no, internal users lang. Hindi nilalabas ang reports ng management accounting sa outside people. It is restricted na i-report lang internally. Kaya nga ang tawag sa report niya ay special purpose financial statements. Bakit special purpose? For example, inutusan ka ng boss mo, kay staff ka, yung boss mo manager, sabi niya, pakigawan nga ako ng report regarding in uh, regarding employee turnover gaano ba kabilis magresign at mapalitan yung mga tao natin sa kumpanya hindi mo makikita sa financial accounting yun kasi hindi naman lahat ng users may pakialam sa empleyado ng kumpanya pero dahil management accounting report yung ginagawa mo at ang kailangan makita ng boss mo ay employee turnover yun ang ibibigay mo so ibig sabihin ang tawag sa financial statements na ginagawa ng management accounting is specific purpose or special purpose kasi you are addressing the specific need of the user. Unlike ang financial accounting, since sumusunod sa PFRS, general needs lang or common needs lang ang kanyang kayang ibigay. Okay, so again, I'll repeat, umiikot lang lahat yan sa restrictive guidelines. Ang management accounting, walang restrictive guidelines. Ang financial accounting, meron. Okay, pura tayo sa type of information. Ang financial accounting, ang nire-report mo lang, monetary. Kaya nga, di ba, ang definition ng financial accounting sa ating mga libro, di ba, financial accounting is a service activity, primarily financial in nature. Okay, financial, monetary. So, ang nire-report mo lang sa financial accounting are transactions that have financial consequence. Kasi kapag ang transaction walang financial consequence, hindi mo yan nire-report sa financial accounting. Kumbaga, ang focus mo sa financial accounting ay quantitative information. Sa management accounting, dahil hindi siya sumusunod sa standard, ang nire-report mo could be monetary as well as non-monetary. Pag sinabing non-monetary, information with, without financial consequence or qualitative information. Ano example nun, sir? Best example of that is benchmarking. Pag sinabi natin benchmarking, it is the process of comparing our practices to the practices of our, of other corporation or other company. Kung baga kinukumpere mo yung ginagawa natin sa ginagawa ng iba. So that we can do some adjustment. Lalo na kung best practices yung kinukumpere mo. Eh, ang proseso, ang mga practices that does not have financial consequence. Pero nire-report mo yan sa management accounting kasi yun yung gustong makita nung gagamit ng report. Sa financial accounting, walang pakialam. Ang ibang users sa kung ano yung proseso mo sa proseso ng kalaban mo, wala. Okay, at mamaya ipapaliwanag ko pa later on yun. Okay, bakit ganun? Bakit hindi kinocompare o hindi nilalagay yung report regarding other company? Pero ang focus muna natin ngayon sa type of information, ah, ang focus muna natin ngayon would be the type of information. Financial accounting, purely monetary. Management accounting, combination of monetary and non-monetary. Okay, next, financial accounting emphasizes reliability or precision. Bakit set ang emphasis ng financial accounting is reliability? Pag sinabing reliability, mapagkakatiwalaan ba yung information? Take note, sa financial accounting, ang gagawa ng FS, tayo, management, tagaloob. Pero ang gagamit ng FS, primarily, tagalabas. 
at kung tagalabas ka, wala kang access sa mga information sa loob. So, ibig sabihin, kung ano man yung nire-report namin na gagamit ng tagalabas, pagkakatiwalaan lang nila yun. So, ibig sabihin, ang focus ng financial accounting is precision, accuracy, tama ba, mapagkakatiwalaan ba yung report na ginagawa natin. Sa management accounting, hindi niya concern yung reliability o precision eh. Bakit hindi concern, sir? Sino ang gagawa? Tagaloob. Sino ang gagamit? Tagaloob din. So, ibig sabihin, may kakayahan yung gagamit ng report, i-verify kung tama ba yung nasa loob ng report o hindi. Sa financial accounting, hindi kayang gawin ng user yun eh. Bakit? Kasi ang user niya, tagalabas. Hindi ka naman pwedeng basta-basta pumasok sa isang kumpanya. Kumpanya, pahingi ako ng records niyo Ay, hindi. No, hindi mo pwedeng basta-basta gawin yun. So, basically, ang concern mo sa financial accounting, reliability. Mapagkakatiwalahan ba at tama ba yung nire-report mo na gagamitin ng tagalabas? Sa management accounting, hindi. Your concern is relevance. Kapaki-pakinabang ba yung report na ginawa mo? For example, sabi nga ng manager mo, pahingi ako ng information regarding employee turnover. Ang pinakita mo, yung time in, time out ng empleyado ay irrelevant yun. Anong pakailan po sa time in, time out ng empleyado? Where in fact, ang gusto kong tignan is kung gano kabilis mapalitan yung mga nagre-resign na employees at kung gano katagal nag stay ang employees sa kumpanya natin. So, ibig sabihin, hindi mo concern kung tama ba yung report o hindi. Kasi kaya mo siyang i-check kung tama o hindi. Ang concern mo, kung yung report na binigay sa'yo, mapapakinabangan mo for your decision making. Kasi ang gumawa ng management accounting report, tagaloob, ang gagamit din, tagaloob. Okay, next. Information source. Ang information source ng financial accounting internal data, ibig sabihin wala kang nilalagay na report regarding other company. Kaya nga ba diba, sa financial accounting, according to conceptual framework, chapter 1, the objective of financial reporting, sa kalagay doon, to provide information about the reporting entity. Maliwanag sa conceptual framework, ang ire-report mo lang, tungkol lang sa kumpanya na to. Wala kang ire-report regarding other companies. Always remember that it is all about the reporting entity. E ang management accounting, susunod ba sa conceptual framework? Hindi, kasi hindi naman niya kailangan sumunod sa PFRS. Eh. So, ibig sabihin, sa management accounting, you can report information about other entities or other company. And again, the best example of that is benchmarking. Yung kakasabi ko lang, Sa benchmarking, nire-report mo yung ate. Kinocompare mo dun sa iba. Benchmarking yun eh. So, naglalagay ka na information regarding other company. Sa financial accounting, walang ganun. Kasi you need to strictly adhere. You need to strictly follow on the requirement of the framework. And the, the requirement of the framework is to provide information about the reporting entity alone. Wala kang i-report re regarding other companies. Diba? No-brainer tong topic na to eh. Pansinin mo, saan, lang, saan tayo bumabalik? Diba? Bumabalik tayo sa number 2. Sa lahat ng comparison na ginagawa natin, we are always going back to number 2. Okay, dyan lang talaga iikot tong topic na to. Next, number 6, the focus of analysis. Financial accounting focuses on the business as a whole. Kumbaga, in other words, financial accounting reports are summarized or aggregated. Kumbaga, ang focus ng financial accounting, pagsamahin, lahat ng kayang pagsamahin. Sa management accounting, hindi, kakaiba, baliktad. Ang focus ng management accounting is various segments, various departments, various parts of an organization. Kumbaga, hanggat kayang paghiwalayin, paghihiwalayin. Management accounting reports are detailed in nature. I'll repeat. Financial accounting reports are aggregated in nature. Pinagsasama lahat ng kayang pagsamahin. Management accounting reports are detailed in nature. Pinaghihiwalay, ginagawang detalyado as much as possible. Kaya nga sa financial accounting, meron doon concept na consolidated financial statements. Pag sinabi consolidated financial statements, yun yung pinagsamang financial statements ng parent saka subsidiary. Magkaibang entity yun eh. Pero pansinin mo, bakit pinagsama ng financial accounting? Kasi ang view niya, iisang kumpanya lang yun. Kasi si parent may control kay subsidiary. So dahil isang kumpanya lang kayo, pagsamahan yung report. Okay, another example, para ma-appreciate ma mo tong number 6. Example would be, pagdating sa segment reporting. Pansinin mo, kahit na may various segment ng isang kumpanya, Sa financial accounting, ang nire-report mong statement of financial position, income statement, 
is yung amount na magkakasama silang lahat. Tapos anong ginagawa mo? Maglalagay ka ng note disclosure regarding sa allocation ng revenue mo. Ay itong segment na to, ito yung kinita niya. Kumbaga, sa financial accounting, ang nakalagay sa face yung magkakasama. Pero sa management accounting, under responsibility accounting, sa mismong face ng income statement o ng balance sheet, naka-allocate na siya per segment. Kung titin mo magkaibang magkaiba sila ng focus, sa financial accounting yung magkakasama na. Tapos sa notes disclosure yung paghihiwalay. Sa management accounting, sa face pa lang ng financial statement, magkakahiwalay na. Okay? Magkaibang magkaiba sila ng focus. Financial accounting reports, aggregated. Management accounting reports, detailed. Okay, next. Frequency of reporting. Financial accounting, ang reporting mo is periodical. Pag sinabing periodical, ibig sabihin po nun, may required period kung kailan ka magre-report. And usually, according to, fin according to PFRS, ang minimum reporting natin is at least annual or yearly. Pero according to PAS 34, interim reporting, you can do a report quarterly, semi-annually, semi monthly, depending on the requirement of the standard. So, kumbaga, ang pagre-report mo, nakadepende sa kung anong sinasabi ng standard. Pero sa management accounting, since hindi niya kailangan sumunod sa standard, kailan ka magre-report? Whenever needed. Kung kailan kailangan. Sa financial accounting, kailangan man o hindi, kailangan mo na siyang i-report uh, in accordance with the required, re required reporting of the standard. Management accounting, no? Okay, nire-report mo siya kung kailan siya kailangan nung gagamit. Okay, sir, bakit ganun? Bakit nag-set ng time, time period ang financial accounting? Kasi ang gagamit, tagalabas. Eh, ang mga tagalabas, magkakaiba ng timing yan kung kailan kailangan yung report, eh. Kaya dahil magkakaiba sila ng timing, nag-set na lang ang standard kung kailan magre-report. Eh, ang management accounting ang gagamit, tagaloob, eh. Eh, yung mga tagaloob, pwede niyang sabihin sa gumagawa ng report, kailangan ko yan by, by 12 p.m. Kailangan ko yan by, by, by 2 o'clock. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinabi niya kailangan niya ng ganung oras, ibibigay mo. Kasi tagaloob kayo pareho. Sa financial accounting, hindi eh. Ang tagalabas, hindi yan pwedeng sabihin sa amin, may kailangan ko yan bukas. Ay, naku, hindi. Okay, maghintay ka kung kailan yung sinet na time period. Okay, last is time orientation. Ang financial accounting, parang hindi makamove on eh. Palagi siya nabubuhay saan? Sa past. Kaya nga siya ay historical. Pasini mo sa definition pa lang ng, ano, ng items, ng elements of financial statements. Assets are resources controlled by the entity arising from past event. Okay, liabilities are present obligation arising from past event. Kumbaga, kailangan merong muna mangyari bago ka mag-report. So, kumbaga, ang financial accounting is living in the past. It is historical in nature. Unlike management accounting, nagre-report ka rin ng nangyari na. Pero primarily, you are reporting on what will happen. Sir, bakit ganun? Bakit ang focus ng management accounting, yung mangyayari pa lang? Kasi remember, ang focus niya with regards to report is relevant. And according to relevant costing na i-discuss natin on other time, According to relevant costing, ang relevant lang sa atin is yung mangyayari pa lang. Kasi ang focus, ang concept ng relevant costing, what happened in the past cannot be changed anymore. So, dapat kailangan natin mag-move on ang, at, at, at ang ire-report natin para maging relevant ay yung mangyayari pa lang. Kaya nga, yung number 8 related sa number 4. Since ang focus mo ay relevance, kailangan yung mangyayari pa lang ang i-report mo. Kasi kapag nangyari na yan, irrelevant na sa akin yan. Hindi ko na kayang baguhin yan eh. Pero ang financial accounting, historical in nature, bakit? Kasi ang focus niya is reliability. Para masabi namin na mapagkakatiwalaan yung report mo, kailangan nangyari siya. For example, sa example lang, meron ka chismosang kapitbahay, sinabi, ay naku, buntis si ganito, buntis si ganyan. O paano masaya yung pagkakatiwalaan mo yung sinabi niya? Kailangan makita mo na talagang buntis. So, gan magkaiba kasi sila ng focus eh. Kaya pagdating sa time orientation, magkaiba rin sila ng gustong mangyari. Ang financial accounting, historical. Ang management accounting, projected or future-oriented in nature.